Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a couple months. I know I've been neglecting it. I wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on. Uh, first off, I just appreciate you guys uh, commenting on the videos. Uh, let me know your advice on the other Trans Am and uh, mine. So, I want to talk about the fuel system today to start off with and tell you what, tell you what I bought. I bought a 20-foot TT Racing uh, 6AN braided hose with the PTFE liner inside of it. Came with 10 hose ends. I got uh, two of these bad boys, two of these, two of these, and four straight fittings. I used all the four. Uh, I used six fittings total. So I used one of these, one of the 90s, and then four of the straights. Um, so there's been a couple ways I've seen this done and I wanted to try to make it cheaper. And you're definitely going to spend less money than me if you follow this advice because I had to uh, spend some extra money to figure out how to do this right. Um, so I bought that kit. It was 120 bucks off of Amazon. Um, it's not on Prime anymore, but you can get it on Amazon. There's there's a lot of different off-brand kits out there. Uh, I liked this one. It, it works. I mean, everything went together. I didn't snap any fittings. Everything seems to fit tight. I haven't pressure tested anything yet because I don't have the wiring harness 100% done. Anyways, uh, so first things first, when you go to cut the line, I use these cobalt cutters. Right here, these cable cutters. They were like $13, I think. Maybe a little less, but probably $13 uh, with tax. So what I did was I wrapped where I wanted to cut with electrical tape, and I just crimped around it, and then snapped it off. Um, and so... Basically, that's what it looks like after you do that. So what I do is I take a little screwdriver. This is a actually a flathead, little little snap on one they give you on the truck. Um, and I don't, I didn't use this one, but I use just a regular Phillips head, small one, and just kind of waller the hole out a little bit just to stretch it back to its shape. Not, I'm not applying a lot of pressure and actually stretching it. I'm just forming it back to a circle. And then I take this end of it and you get in between the PTFE and the braided fill line, and you have to give it some space for the collar. So, this is what we got. If you notice, these PTFE uh, fittings are just a little bit different than the rubber braided hose. So, this is what you get. Got that little collar on there. Okay, so show you how this works. I'm not actually gonna put it, like put it all the way on there fully, but you have to spread that out right there because this collar needs to slide on there. And you push that. Let's see, yeah, push that collar. There we go. You can feel it bottom out. Bottoms out right inside there. And then, uh, sorry. Before you untape that, you want to go ahead and slide your collar on the correct way so the threads are facing towards where your uh, line's coming out. Then you would take this end, push it in flush to the fitting, and then you would start screwing it on there. It works pretty well. I didn't have any problems with them coming loose or trying to slide out. Everything stayed pretty well in place. This collar fits pretty tight on that PTFE. so. Uh, I really like the way that turned out, so uh, I haven't pressure tested it like I said, so I can't give like an official review if you guys should go out and buy this. I will try to update you when I do pressure it up. As far as the fittings go, they seem like they're pretty good quality. Uh, this is my first time using this stuff, so uh, for you expert, experts out there, I'm sure you have some better advice to shed, but this is what I'm going with right now. Um, so I had to buy this kit right here and I plan on using a uh, braided hose for my transmission lines and I'm probably honestly going to use PTFE uh, because I think I can get uh, a shorter kit for around 75 bucks and I already have some fittings here in case I need some more. Um, so how I connect it to the car is I'll start with the, the fuel rail. Uh, so I use the uh, 
quick disconnect ends for the fuel rail. I'm using the truck fuel rail and so I use the screw tight. Got the open end right right there to slide over the end of the fuel rail. Anyways, uh, I don't have a part number on these. I think I tried searching this number and it actually didn't come up with anything. But basically how you word it, just if you want to type it on Amazon, uh, 6 a.m. mail to 3 8 quick disconnect. And you want a 3 8 and you want a 5 16 both 6 a.m. Because you got a 5 16 return and a 3 8 uh, uh, feed. So basically, let's. this is an end I cut off the sending unit. Let's just ignore this right here and imagine that's just part of that that goes to the rest of your fuel rail. So this is what the end of it looks like, except there's a little more of an end on it. First thing you do is you slide this in until it's past that. Uh, so it'll go all the way up against it. And then you slide this on there and then you would screw it on there. And then it's tight. And I just feel like this is more secure than the actual pop and lock style. <laughs> uh, however you want to call it anyways for those experts out there let me know if you ever had any of them pop off the, the actual plastic end ones that snap on uh, that way we can shed a little light and help some people out there if uh, how reliable they are and I'm sure it depends on the brand name and all that so anyways these were uh, 12 dollars for the 3 8 14 77 for the 5 16 they sent me two 5 16 that's why I have one right here still um and I ordered them about a month ago, or over a month ago, so I wasn't able to return it. So I ordered another, uh, or I ordered, a, not another, but I ordered a 3 8 And now I'm going to send this one back in that 3 8 package, saying they sent me the wrong one because they sent me the wrong one the first time. Because that's $15. So, um, so I have that to go to the fuel rail. And then, let's see, uh, from the sending unit to the braided hose, I used... Uh, I did not flare the lines. That's definitely an option. I just I didn't want to drop the tank to have to flare. I didn't know how hard it was going to be to flare it while it was on the car. Uh, I haven't done it before. I have a little kit, um, but um, the pickup it was it's brand new and it's from an '87. It's a little shorter than what was on uh, originally. So I went ahead and I got a tubing cutter, which is. A Go Change Mini Tube Cutter, $7.99 on Amazon. It cut through that aluminum, super easy. Um, anyways, so there's a couple ways you can go about that. You can do the tube cutter, and you can do what's called a 6 a.n. male flare to a 5 16 a.n. male to hard tube. That's how I searched it. And uh, basically what I did was I didn't know what size the return was the return line or yeah the return line on my pickup my sending unit sorry uh i don't know why i keep calling it pickup um i guess maybe that's i feel like that's what it's called when it's a carburetor anyways uh so this is what i cut off if i would have cut if i would have had this tubing cutter before i ordered all my fittings i could have cut it off took my little harbor freight mic and mic'd it so this is what you guys can do i don't know how it changes with years and if you're doing this on a different project that's not a Trans Am. Uh, so just put the mic over the end of the tube that you're actually going to be using the compression fitting on. Um, and so right here I got on inches and I got 0 0.31. Here I'll tighten it and show the camera here. 0 0.31. So if you, you, can, you can get on Google and Google what that is in the fraction. Uh, I have like a little chart. So 0.31 is 5 sixteenths. And that's why that 5 sixteenths fit on there. Anyways, 5 sixteenths is not the size, or sorry, is the size I needed. I ordered two fittings. I ordered a 5 sixteenths and I ordered a 3 eighths uh, for the hard tube. And basically, if I want to later down the line make my uh, return a 3 8 instead of 5 16 so I can actually use the 3 8 line that's provided on that sending unit. Uh, I think I saw LSX Matt do that. He used the 3 8 return on his because he was running the supercharger and uh, 
way more fuel pressure than me. Uh, so maybe down the road I'll use this fitting. Um, this fitting was, I don't know if I already said it, was it was $10.77 on Amazon. And the way that works is pretty simple. After you cut it off with the tube cutter, you want to make sure everything's clean. And you would uh, slide, I'll have to use this end for demonstration purposes. And then you would slide the tube end on the end of the hose, this end, and put it on there. It actually crimps on the end of that pipe. And you want to keep pressure on that on the line. And basically what I did was I took a wrench right here and a socket on this side and kept pressure on it. That way I, that tube not actually uh, slide out. Because if, if you're doing this upside down like I was, and you don't have pressure on it, you're using wrenches, it's going to slide off and then it'll crimp it on absolutely nothing. So, I don't know if you guys noticed here, I've seen most people, when they use these, they get the opposite of what I got, and it costs you more money. So, and maybe there's another reason behind that that I'm not sure of. Anyways, uh, they use a, I guess it'd be a female version. So, their fitting would, uh, have this end on it instead of the male version and then they have to get an adapter that's male on one side and male on the other side so they can connect it to their hose end well this is already ready to go to your hose end so uh i don't know what the deal is with people doing that i don't know if they maybe certain brands don't make this uh a male i'm not sure but anyways give you another look at it that is what it looked like looks like that's the 6an end and that's the tube end right there. So this will be tube, and this will be your hose. All right, so one, le one more connector left, and that will be this bad boy right here. It's a 6AN to a, let's see, this one is a 14 millimeter by 1.5. I actually used a 16 millimeter. So I ordered these two sizes, again, because I wasn't sure what size I needed, and that's why I want to make this video so you guys, if you guys have that same uh, sending unit, uh, the supply line actually has a threaded uh, pipe, or I mean it has a fitting on the end of the, the tube. And that tube is a 16 millimeter, don't know what that converts to, uh, anyways, so it threads into this and then your line hooks to this. That way you don't have to cut it off and put another one of these fittings. I got these on... Summit Racing for $7.41 each. I can't remember what shipping was. I had to order both of them. If I would have known what size I needed for sure, I would have just ordered on Amazon for $15. Uh, so you guys can now do that because if you go on Summit, unless you're ordering other stuff, you're going to pay about $15 when shipping and that gets included and it's probably not two-day shipping. Honestly, don't remember though. Uh, so either way, uh, maybe you can save a few bucks there so you don't have to buy two fittings. Like on, on this for the 3 8 and 5 16 I use the 5 16 line in for my return. So, let's see. Also, this little mic uh, is from Harbor Freight. I think they're like 15 bucks. Depends on when you get them on sale. I think you can use the 20% discount on it. I've had this one for a while. It's come in handy a lot. Uh, 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 uh. And they even sell the batteries in their little 299 battery pack. Mine actually went dead when I was trying to measure these out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the car and show you guys how I actually routed my uh, fuel line. It's not finished, but it's all to length. So well, before I go out to the car, I'm gonna show you this whole part list there. Everything is pretty much there with the price. I don't have a lot of actual numbers for everything. Some of them didn't have them on Amazon. So also got the brake calipers. All ready to go in the front. The rears on the other hand are missing parts. Don't even know what the spring and stuff looks like. I got my manual, about to go over inside and figure it out. But these are crazy, these rear ones. So any information would be appreciated. I, cut, I would just like to keep these on there for right now though, instead of upgrading. So yeah, let's go take a look at the actual. All right guys, this is what we got underneath the car. We got the sending unit up here. And we got the uh, the actual supply line with the fitting on it. Um, you can see it right there with 
corner of my light, do do do, right there, going into the little fitting. Then we got the tube uh, up there, the line up there with the collar crimped onto it, going down to the return. Trace it down here. There we go. Got my fuel filter. It's an Evil Energy 50 millimeter, uh, 100 micron. We got the straight fitting going into it, the 6AN. Uh, end. The, this comes with 6AN, 8AN, and 10AN uh, ends, so you can, uh, if you upgrade your fuel line, you can still use it, which is definitely a concern when you're upgrading your fuel line. You're like, oh man, can I use that that $30 filter with it? Anyways, uh, and then I got a little 90 right there going down. Underneath the cross member for the, tra the transmission and going up to the intake. So I think that's about all it that you need to see underneath here. Uh, well, I'm down here actually, I'm going to show you what I did for the cable for the transmission. That's the stock bracket. I mounted it to the oil, uh, the transmission pan. Uh, the truck cable is longer and gets mounted back on the upper part of the, tra the transmission, so I had to take those screws out and get that bracket completely gone. I have not uh, got a keeper for this to actually keep it on the shifter linkage, uh, but I have hooked it up and got it in all the gears and everything works fine. You just need to get a little keeper to actually keep it on there. And if I want to, I can actually use this right here from a fourth gen. I pulled this off. The only thing is this doesn't fit in the shifter, right? You have to modify the shifter. So I think I'm going to be better off just finding a keeper for the end of it and making that work. All right, so up here, got the supply on top and the return on bottom with those fittings I was telling you about. So that's pretty self-explanatory already. Going on and down. All right. So, all right, as you can see, the wiring harness is in. It's almost, it's, well, it's done as far as all the plugs. It's just not hooked up to the fuse box yet. Uh, this is where the computer originally sat. I extended everything, uh, four foot so I could run it all the way through the fender and then into the dash. Uh, basically what I did was um, I lay, I extended everything four foot and then from here on was all exposed wire. Nothing was tied together at all and I cut, lengthened everything to length because I wanted everything nice and tidy. So we got all that stuff. Everything's wrapped up that has to do with the truck harness. There's some third gen stuff that's not wrapped up yet because I haven't figured out how I'm going to route it 100%. So uh, this is all the all the pink wires coming in right there. Coming from the main harness. Right there. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, there's labeled injectors. and Anyways, I have to get those spliced into a thicker wire go to the fuse box. And this is going in uh, underneath the dash right now. And it's just, it's just laying in there right now. Nothing's hooked up. And all my wires have to be hooked up to gauges and brake switch and all that. So that's done. Uh, I'll try to include some pictures uh, about right here of the the wiring harness all stranded out right here, and then of it. Well, I guess I don't need to include a picture of it done, so you guys can see it right here. I mean, everything's pretty nice and tight. Uh, Going over here is the mass airflow sensor. Not for sure how I'm routing it yet, because I got to figure out how I'm doing my cold air intake. Got plenty of length on it, and like shorten it if I need to. Uh, got everything going down underneath the car right now. Uh, there's all the transmission stuff, just kind of laying over here temporarily. Got the third gen harness cleaned up. Got the lights. Do -do -do. Running all along there. And then I got part of it wrapped up it's right there. It's that thicker one right there. That's the third gen harness going here. That's going to uh, the windshield wiper motor, stuff like that. AC stuff coming down to the starter. Don't have the ignition wire hooked up yet because I don't want to accidentally crank it over. Anyways, uh, I got these wires ran to the battery because I'm going to put my fuse box right here. I want to show you guys what I'm going to use. This is about my third time doing this video. Uh, I kept recording it in the phone view instead of like the actual side view. So, um, where we got? Oh, right here. There we go. So this is what I'm using. 
it's already all there ready to go I got all the terminals right here to wire it up just like they did on LT1 swap except this is I don't have to go out and buy separate relays and all that I mean I have to buy the actual relays yes but uh, it's all one piece so and it looks really nice got a nice cover on it you've got a bottom cover so the only cables you'll see is a uh, some wrap coming out of right there um, this is what I use on the harness so Chicago Electric. They used all different sizes they had. They had three different sizes. Um, I think it was like 14 foot for this, of course. And as the sizes got bigger, the lengths got shorter. I got two bags of each one, and then today I went and bought this. So a total of uh, seven bags, because there's three different sizes. Um, $2.99 or $1.99 each, super cheap. Also, uh, I needed some three quarter inch and they didn't have that Harbor Freight and I got this at AutoZone. I think it was around six bucks. I hardly used any of it though. Anyways, fuse box. How much did that bad boy cost? I was, when I was doing research on this, I was trying to find something like this and everyone's like, oh, they're $200 and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what all the entertain, but Amazon, MIC tuning, 12 slot relay box, fuses, $11.49. So, I'll show you where I'm going to mount this. Probably have to get some spacers. I got my ground right there. I'm probably going to mount it just like that. I think that'll look pretty good. Anyways, that's enough of that. Alright. Try not to repeat myself here, even though I've done this video a few times, so I'm trying to put everything together here. Uh, windshield wiper motor would not fit. I need to know the best way to go about that. I've done some research. Might use the one out of this car. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, may go another route. Just let me know what's out there uh, that you guys think works the best. <sighs> we got this problem with the pitman arm hitting this AC bracket, so I'm going to have to trim some of that out. The wheels are turned pretty far to the left right now to hit that, as you can see. I don't know how much further they're actually going to be able to go anyways. So I need to remove the bracket and see how much further they actually go than that. So I know how much I need to notch into it before I just go to notching. Um, anyways, I think that's about it with what I've had trouble with. Oh, and the cool bracket. Uh, fit, all that stuff fitting up. Um, I just put some washers in here trimmed that off so this actually can come out of the socket and scoot over that's not permanent right now that's just the way uh i made it work right now so obviously i could uh put another hole there thread it up all that don't know how i'm gonna do it for sure um polish the that bad boy a little bit looks a lot better a lot cleaner having hood clearance issues with this piece on there i'm gonna actually chop this off and make this a lot cleaner. I was gonna like cut this off and make a custom brace. I don't know if I even need this right here. I'm gonna see how much it flexes without it. And if I do, I'll do some kind of an X probably. I don't know, something to keep it to clear that. But right now I'm gonna try to make it as clean as possible, get rid of that. Anyways, if anyone's done that, I don't think they have. So hopefully I'm helping some people out here and seeing what all they can do with this hood. Because I have not seen one out there yet that has cleared this hood for truck accessories. So that's why I'm doing these videos. I want to help you guys out, show you the uh, the way I'm doing it. Um, by the way, this brown light from Harbor Freight, it's dead right now. But it is awesome. I got it for 30 bucks last weekend. I think it's regular 40 Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, okay, so also a little update. Got the trans in. And we got the new pickup with so now I am a proud owner of two LS's. I have uh, I got this 2004 SS 6.0 high output uh, truck uh, about a month ago. Um, honestly, I was not looking for an SS at all, but dang, I saw this and uh, I went to look at it and could not walk away without it. So, uh, anyways. The reason why I got it, I didn't need a new truck. I have a work car right there. Uh, so here's the deal. 
right now I'm in Oklahoma, and uh, in July, or I, let's just say from July 2018, or July 2017 to 2018, my wife has been looking for a job at Universal Studios in California. I told her if she got the job, we'd move out there. So, well, she's out in California right now. Started a new job at the end of, was it the end of July? Yeah, at the end of the July, she started a new job. So she's been out there for three right, months. I wanted to add this in the video. Kind of forgot about it when I was talking about the whole California thing. But when I was doing my Cayman video, uh, my wife was actually still, uh, or when I was doing my Cayman, my wife was actually still looking for a job out in California at that time. Uh, and if you notice, it's about 11 minutes in the video, I believe it is. Uh, it cuts to us talking, and she says, fifth time's a charm, babe. And I even say, on the job? Fifth time's a charm, babe. Fifth time. This, this job? and she'd been trying to get that job for a year or a job out there in that industry for a year and she got it so i wanted to keep that in there for motivation to other people like yeah it was her fifth time and she got turned down a lot but she got the right job for her and she's there now chasing her dreams so don't give up on your dreams guys and yeah that's all i wanted to say she's kind of feeling it out making sure that she likes it um, and then I will follow her out there. What does that mean for this? I don't know yet. I know you don't have to comment. I already know this motor will not be allowed out there legally. Yes, I'm sure there's a way around it, but this legally, if I take it to a ref, it's not going to make it because it's a truck motor. So any help in that area would be great. I'm still going to finish this. I'm still going to make it drivable and all that. And I'll probably take it down there and park it in the garage until I figure out what I can do with it. Um, yeah, and a garage in California is going to be pretty rare, too. Anyways, uh, so, also, a little update with this. I am not swapping a single body panel over to this. So, I got to thinking about it. The whole reason why I'm building this car, this car, is because it was my brother's first car. My brother passed away 10 years ago today, and... This is the part of him that I have, and I'm definitely not getting rid of it, and I'm definitely building it. This car, I could care less about. It's a really cool car, but it's not staying here. It's not going with me. It, it was literally bought for the wheels, and it's a great, clean, clean car for someone else to build. But uh, I want to keep this car looking the same way it did. I want the same bumper on it and stuff. Uh, I want it to match the pictures when he was a kid. So... Um, Anyways, this car, I would like to get it running before I sell it, uh, but if I have to put too much money into it, I'm just going to sell it as is. There is no title, um, but it is all, all there. It's all complete, and I'm not taking the gauges out of it or nothing, so it's really, it'd be a really great builder for someone because that thing is straight. Uh, if you haven't seen this car before, if this is your first time watching the video, I do have a link, or not a link, I do have another video on my page that's uh, what you get for a $300 Trans Am, so... Dang it, now you guys know how much I paid for it. Um, just kidding. So, that's that's the big life news that's going on right now. Probably moving to California pretty soon. Maybe not, but I'm thinking so. So, uh, I'm trying to get moving on this and get it, uh, get it done as fast as possible. So, there should be some videos cranking out on this. Um, and try not to have two months in between them. Uh, I really do appreciate all your guys' comments uh, on the build. Uh, advice and all that it's great uh, let's see I think that's about it I'm probably leaving something out but anyways uh, I think I said in my video no one did comment on this um, I do not know a lot about those TPIs tune yeah tune more directions uh, I don't know a lot about them so I know right now whenever I hook it up to the battery and I turn it over it's getting somewhat of a fire because it's backfiring out of the intake if, and the story was he got a tune on it and that's what changed that's what happened something happened when he got a tune he replaced the fuel pump checked the timing and could never get it started after that so if you guys have any advice maybe something that could have went wrong on the tuning maybe maybe it's something i can actually fix so uh, maybe it has to be all computer computerized so anyways 
Uh, that's enough jabbering. Um, if you guys like what you see, uh, hit a thumbs up, subscribe. There'll be some more contact content out there for you. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, get my way through this, helping some people along the way with some people helping me. So thanks, guys.